it's rainy in LA today. It's a really rainy day, but I love rainy days in the shop. Cold, rainy days. Anyway, this video is going to be the first in a series of videos that maybe we'll call catalog or uh, practicing design or I don't know, we'll figure it out. But anyway, here's the idea. Oh, So in this series, I'll go onto a company or designer's website and then look through their products or catalog. And then after looking at all their stuff, I'll try and design something out of wood, because I'm a woodworker, that would fit in that catalog. And then hopefully whatever I end up making really fits that company and their aesthetic. But I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So the whole reason that I got this idea in the first place was because of this company that I want to try it out on first, which is Houseplant. So this is a quick glance at the Houseplant website. Uh, it's a great looking website and it's a cool looking company. And you can see why I was excited to sort of see how I might be able to fit some sort of design onto this catalog. They've got a ton of ashtrays, um, but being a woodworker, I didn't think it was that good of an idea to make an ashtray. Okay, so I got an idea to make a stash box. I went on their website and they have this clay pot with a lid and they call it a stash box, but it's not really a box and it's not made out of wood. So I'm gonna make a stash box and I think I know what I want it to look like. So now that I have my idea for a stash box, I went on to SketchUp to start designing the overall look. I had seen a couple of images on Instagram that kind of made me want to go with this box joint, finger joint look. And then, yeah, ultimately this is the design that I'm going to be going for. Moreover, I wanted to use this pattern plywood idea that I saw for the lid of the stash box. And that's what I'm actually beginning the process of making right here. This whole idea for the pattern plywood top actually came from this YouTuber that I watched named Michael Alm. Um, I really recommend that you guys check him out. He is a fabricator, woodworker, YouTuber who has a ton of tips and tricks and secrets that he just very generously shares with his YouTube community. So I highly recommend that you go over there and give him a a watch. So this is me beginning the process of making the pattern plywood top or the lid. I wanted it to have this waterfall edge which just means that the pattern will be continuous from the top of the box then falling down to the front side. I wound up making like 7,000 of these little cutoffs uh, in order to be able to do a bunch of different glue ups and then prototype the exact shape and size of the lid that I wanted to do. Uh, I ended up making a bunch of these different pattern plywood blanks and then bringing them over to my buddy Brian's shop. This is Brian, uh, who has this nifty little drum sander that I was able to get each blank nice and flat. Uh, this is a pretty typical glue up at my shop where it's just one person doing all the work and then three people watching. Uh, this is my boss and my two coworkers who are just quietly supporting from the side. For the body of the stash box, I decided to go with a riffs on white oak and then try and use as much of the sap that I could as possible. I really struggled for a long time with how I was going to hide the box bottom. Once I make the dado, it's going to go through one of those tenons and then there will be an exposed area, you know, a gap in the tenons. And I was kind of trying to figure out how I was going to fix that. Ultimately, I ended up just doing it and then going with a plug. So I made the dado, went right through these tenons, and then I went with a plug and I just used some sap wood to highlight the plug rather than hide it. So at this point in the process, I thought it might be a good idea to get some design suggestions on what might even belong inside of stash box. So I don't really smoke, so I called up my friend Ryan who does smoke and tried to pick his brain on what design elements might be good for the inside of a stash box. Powers, 
At the beginning of our conversation, I wasn't sure if Ryan was going to have too much to offer in the way of designs. Like, if you were going to, you know, if you were going to open this box, what's the things you're, you'd be most excited to see? QR code. For what? Oh, you're going to be roll. Oh, yeah, rolling papers. Yeah, well, I mean, I can't make rolling papers, but I could. I All right, but them. you should have a little spot for them. A little spot for rolling them. papers? Like, yeah. I mean, what designates a rolling paper spot from a paperclip spot? Well, I mean, this might be too much, but you could make a little compartment on the side where you put the rolling papers in and then you pull them through like tissue paper, like a tissue box. That's a very good idea. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Like a tissue box that goes inside a tissue box holder. Yes, a tissue box holder. I like I like that a lot. I, I wonder how I could do it. You'd have to make a tiny little tissue box holder. Right. A teeny weeny, teensy weeny, yellow polka dot tissue box holder. Yeah. After my conversation with Ryan, I was pretty excited to get started on the construction of the box again, and more importantly, the interior. For the hinges on the box, I went with these invisible brass sauce hinges, S-O-S-S, -S, that's the brand. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I had a really hard time with them at first. I had a hard time getting them to sit well in the plywood top, and then I ended up dadoing out, or sorry, rabbiting out a, uh, a bit of the plywood top to then put a, a solid, white oak uh, housing in there for the mortises for the sauce hinges. And even that, I ended up making the mortises a little too tight. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good rule of thumb in woodworking that you don't ever want to be forcing joinery. And I really ended up forcing the crap out of these uh, hinges to go into their mortises. And uh, I ended up going through two pairs and then finally getting the mortises to fit properly. This was possibly one of my favorite parts of the process where I finally got to implement Ryan's idea. Uh, it took a little bit of brainstorming and some problem solving to figure out how it's going to make it work exactly, but ultimately I was super happy with the way it came out. I ended up routing out this little slot on the router table, but I had to use a really thick piece of wood because I was getting chatter with the quarter inch piece that I was going to end up needing. So it's not great for wood movement, but I did use a thicker piece and then routed it out, then took it over to the planer and brought it down to its final dimension. Then once I got the fit nice and tight and bang on for the slot that it was going in, I just took it over to the spindle sander and made this nice little notched out finger pull section. And then I just wanted there to be some storage uh, in the box. I'm ultimately gonna end up making a tray, like a rolling tray for a grinder and some other elements, but I wanted there to be some storage underneath that. So I wanted to make these compartments and I used this piece of white oak that had some serious spalting in it. And it actually even looked like spalted maple. This is the template that I ended up making for the tray as well. I ended up making the tray out of ash. So, um, you know, in, in the end, I really did end up making an ash tray, even though initially I thought it wasn't a very good idea. But here I am uh, just routing it out and then ultimately took it over to the drill press to get that two and a quarter inch cut out for a grinder to sit in. Okay, so I'm basically done with the box and I am happy with how it's come out and I'm definitely proud of the design. But um, there's just something that is lacking, I feel like, in the design. And it makes me think of this thing that Ira Glass said, where for a while, when you start in a new field, your abilities don't match your little taste. Like the levels don't match up between your ability and your taste. And I'm kind of feeling that way on this project. It's not to say that I don't have the ability to make um, something that would have been better or looked better. It's more to say that my design abilities don't quite yet match my taste. And that's okay.
that's it. That's the video. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed the process and being able to watch the design all the way through the construction. There's going to be more episodes in this series. The next one that I have planned is a toolbox for Van Nystad. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching and uh, please come back to see more in the future. Damn, bro, you blaze. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. A little grinder here. Don't forget that up. <laughs> nice. Looks great, Ari. You're finally done. Would you use it? <laughs> would you use it to smoke? Or to roll something? No, it's too much. <laughs> <laughs>